Okay, so look, starting off with just a spray bottle full of water. You gotta have a typical utility knife that you can cut the paint with. But the other thing that I, I use also is I almost always have some kind of a, a sanding block like this. Okay, and this is just something I made. You can see it's got a, a saw kerf in there. And this is a block of wood with a triangle on it. I'll show you what that does in a little bit. But the dimensions of this block, including the, the saw kerf, they equal a half a sheet of sandpaper. So I can just wrap it all the way around. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm just spraying this because one of the things I've got to do is I've got to take this molding off. I'm gonna cut down on my dust. And um, I cut my paint line right here, okay? One of the things about this old paint is it's crispy and it does tend to kind of walk into the casing. And you don't want it to walk in the casing if you don't want to. And part of what I'm doing um, by cutting is eliminating that possibility and not making it entirely impossible but it's helping it out a lot i'm going to take this here and i'm going to sand this corner off okay i have the opportunity here to sand that off okay and what that does is that breaks the paint seal Right, so even if the paint does chip, it can't chip into this face. Well, that's really, really important. I don't want to have more work than necessary. Now here, I can't do that because the edge of the molding is flush with this face, so I'm not even gonna worry about it there. All right, so next on the list of tools I use, I use these little itty bitty flat bars, and these guys are really, really good. I think they, originated as beekeepers tools, so they're also called hive tools. But I use these as pa in pairs to pull off the first molding that's gonna release this element of the window, which was called the bottom sash, okay? So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to take the hook of my tool here, and I'm gonna insert it in the back. I could drive this in the front, okay? Like that, that's not bad, but usually, I will pull it back there to create some space right there. And that's because if I'm gonna if I'm gonna scar up my my window at all, I want my scars to be where you can't see them. But now that it's open, I can stick this in and just kind of go about my business. You know, prying it off. And once I pull this off, man, it's just the bottom sash should come right out. We've got these guys. These are called end nippers, end nippers, and they'll, they'll grab a nail right there. They'll also pinch your fingers, and they'll pull the nail out of the back of my moldings. Thanks. Okay. They'll also pull the nails out of my moldings like that. Okay. So I got another. Perfect. Okay. It's important to pull the nails out through the back because when you, when the nail is driven through this side, the fibers of the wood encase around the top of the nail. And then if you were to push it out, you get a little micro explosion there that you then have to repair. So I just pull them out through the back like I was taught when I was a youngster. And you know, just go that way. No, this guy was here. Yeah. So I'm going to label this. Keep track of it. N, three. This is my left. Okay. This is N, three, my right. Keep that important. It's important to keep that organized. All right, so then, it's still somewhat painted shut, but now 
my stops holding it in, those are gone. I'm just gonna insert my bar at this spot here and I'm gonna pry, right? Oh, see how it pops open? Isn't that nice? Boom. And that's gonna let me just pull it right into the room, into, into the room. That's gonna let me pull it right into the room. So, there you go. Ah, see that? Good to go. So now, now that I've got the bottom sash out, I gotta take the top sash out. And to do that, I've gotta get this parting bead out. This is a little half inch strip of wood that fits into a groove and then my finger is just not strong enough. So I've got this tool right here I call my duck build vice grips. Okay, and these are available at Harbor Freight and they're about 10 bucks and they are in the, in the welding section. These are sheet metal pliers. Okay, so now I'm gonna pop this out. Boom. Hey. Uh. Oh, look at that. Ready to go. Sponsored by Big Red. <sighs> <laughs> All right, so look, I've got these doors here um, that are access panels to let me put the, uh, put the ropes in and change out the weights. And it's these very doors here that indicate that you're always supposed to work on these windows from the inside all right and if you ever see somebody working on the window from the outside on a ladder you know out in the sun as you know it's because that they're a rookie and they haven't really realized what these doors are for these doors are so that you can take the windows out the sash out of the opening and um, change out the ropes very easily without taking the casing off you never want to take the casing off if you don't have to well, I've got some paint buildup in my screws and taking the side of my screwdriver and just knocking that paint out real quick so that I can fit the slot in there. Um, these, these have never been opened, I don't think. And these, uh, there's a little saw line right here that you can see on the face. And on the back, we can't see, there's another saw line that comes the other way so that the grain is still connected inside that little uh, piece of the jam there, but you can pry on it and usually you can break that grain. See how it's breaking? You hear that? See, there you go. So I broke that grain and now I just have to work this little door off. There you go. And see that? This is the cut that I was saying goes halfway through on that side. So you've got two cuts. One goes this way and one goes that way. And this grain in the middle, you know, it's like the, it's like the fingerprint, you know, on your finger. It's, it, it's, it breaks off in such a way that it will only fit back here again. Okay, so now it's time to get the weights out. Let's see if I can do this without getting stuck. Huh? There it is. Boom. Got it. Okay, so look. When you're tying a figure eight knot, okay, this is what you have to do, okay? You know, Take it for granted that you have to stick it, the rope through the hole, all right? But I'll usually hang it like this, okay? 
so that I call this part here my tail. And what I'll do is where the rope goes through the hole on the weight, you know, or I'm letting it hang there, about where that sill is, that's the stool, I'll pinch it with my thumb, and that's got a lot of leverage right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around like this, and most people, when they tie the knot, they want to go right there, okay? But you can't go there. That doesn't do anything, okay? You have to go around one more time and come in through the backside, okay? And what that does is that creates what you call a figure eight. And then once you get to about there, you want to let go of your thumb, okay? And pull both on the tail and the weight at the same time. And then when you can visually verify that this part of the rope goes through that loop and is pinching on the weight, you've got a true figure eight that will never come undone, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and cut that off, cut my tail here, and then the easy way to get it back in the hole is to grab up top like this, and that will pull the weight in the hole just like that. And then you can take your put your door back on. That one doesn't fit. The door will only go back on the hole it came out of. Right? So put your screws back on. This was live over here. They were moving You gotta get some of that Billy Bob wasp spray. You know what Billy Bob wasp spray is? Gasoline? Well, I use mineral spirits. Uh. You know? <laughs> so that way, you know, everybody's got mineral spirits, I think. So, all right, can you give me a couple of those ropes there? Yes. Try one more time. Boom! Nice. Like that. Let it hang. Thumb around the back, through the hole, tie. That is a figure eight. I was built for speed. Speed? I am speed. Now I've got all this paint build up here and this residue. I'm going to scrape off this build up because over the years the um, the paint just adds a thickness after thickness after thickness and these sashes they ride up and down these tracks and if that track gets thinner and thinner and thinner then you lose your mobility in your um, in your window so we're gonna make it mobile again I've got one of the best tools for window restoration right here this is the pro scraper there are other models of this I think there's a Viper as well but the beauty of this guy is it's got a carbide blade here that's replaceable. See these screws here? They, uh, you can even find, what size of those, Bill, do you remember? 0.5 by 12 millimeter? Something like that. Yeah. But you can, you know, you can lose these screws and they'll, um, you can replace those as well. But it hooks up to a vacuum. See that hole right there? You know, that's perfect. So I'm gonna use this scraper to scrape off some of the, some of the residue here and, um, you know, and make it clean again. All right, so now that I've got my tracks scraped and you know I broke my parting bead, I'm gonna put new parting beads in and create the, this middle track for the, for the sash to ride up against, okay? And the way I'm gonna do that, I'm not gonna use a measuring tape or anything. I'm just gonna stick it in here and hope it fits. Dang, it's too long. So what am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna take my pencil, I'm gonna mark it right up there and take my handy dandy saw where'd it go right behind me okay oh yeah her gotta have the 
you can't cut a parting bead without the sound. <laughs> Love it. All right. <laughs> so, so remember the trick to cutting a parting bead, you know, is to uh, you got right now. I'm cutting an angle. You got to cut an angle on there. That's going to go down. That's going to go down toward my sill. There you go. There you go. I'm going to measure that here. Oh, isn't that nice? Now I'm going to take my pencil again. Mark it up there. Cut it on the pencil line. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's so nice. I wonder if it fits the other side. Ah. Ah. Oh, pretty good. Oh, it doesn't fit, so I'm gonna <laughs> stick with this side over here, okay? Now, I, I promised you earlier that I would show you another use for this sanding block, okay? For this sanding block right here. You see how it has this point on there? This point, particularly designed for window restoration professionals like myself who need to get in this parting bead slot and sand out some of the paint buildup that gets in there. So this fits very nicely. That point fits very nicely inside there. It allows me to just sand it off. Isn't that nice? All right, turn it over. There you go. I mean, it fits, but man, it's so tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to taper it slightly so that it goes into the hole better. And I'm going to use a little itty bitty tool called the block plane, but I'm going to just plane this one edge right there. Boom. All right. And so this tool here makes it plain and simple. All right. So now my hammer is here. Boom. Ready to go. All right. Perfect, he says. Just perfect. Okay, so now, I mean, I'm just about ready to put my sash back in, but I've probably got some paint buildup on my sash that I have to take off before I put it back in, okay? Because that paint buildup will impede the movement in the track. So I'm looking at this guy. Look. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, that paint buildup right there. See that right there? You gotta stick that knot in the end of the rope into the knot hole. See how that works? Okay. Now this is gonna fit really, really nice and tight. So let me get my hammer. Where did I put my hammer? Not a lot of room in here. All right. Get my hammer. Tap that guy in. Isn't that nice? All right. There we go. Yeah, it goes in there like that. Boom. I'll put my sash in this all the way down position. Take my parting bead and install it in the parting bead slot. There you go. Tap it in with my mini persuader. And this guy goes all the way up just like that. Then, of course, I gotta do the, I gotta scrape this guy.
All right, so putting that knot back in the knot hole. Tap it in with my hammer. There we go. Other one. Boom. Beautiful. Just beautiful, he says. Yep. Okay, so now that the ropes are changed out and the moldings are almost ready, I'm only going to fasten the left side. And the reason why is I want to be able to take the window sashes out very easily at this point to be able to work on them in the future. By nailing the left side, I can put the sashes back in, the, the window will function, I can lock it, and the window will be secure. And you can leave and you can go eat your lunch, you can go to dinner, you can go see your friends, and you know that you don't have anything to worry about. So, what I'm going to do, nail this side, and I'm going to leave this side loose so that I can take the sash out at any given point in time. So I'm going to nail my stop on here. All right. Okay. There we go. I'm going to lift it up, check my alignment. It was good. There, put that guy back down. There. So now I can, now I'm ready to go. Okay. The beauty of doing the mechanical makeover first is that you enable yourself to work on the window easily in the future. So I just finished the mechanical makeover. It locks, okay? I can raise the sash and close it with one finger. I can lower the top sash and raise it with one finger. Again, I'll lock it. I can go to lunch. I can unlock it. And I will just simply take this stop off because I haven't nailed it. Take the sash out. Take it to my table. Set it on my table and now I can work on it. And not only that, I can take the top sash out just as easy because I've done the work in advance be able to do so. I take my parting bead out like that and then my top sash comes out just as easy and I can lay it on my table and I can work on it and I can get this dadgum gray glazing out of here. Look at that. So you know I can do my work and then when I'm done I, I can put it back because I have my ropes here, ready to go. Boom. One side's in. The other side is in. There. Parting bead goes in. We have the bottom sash. Put him in. There you go. Stop goes back on. Everything looks as it should, and you can go and eat your lunch. So that's that's the uh, mechanical makeover.